Hmm, that is very interesting. Oh, hi there. Um, you guys probably found me from TikTok or Google Classroom, but my name is Alexis, and today we're gonna go over inverse functions. So, in this video, I'm gonna explain to you what is the inverse function, how does it look like in a graph, in a table, and how can we solve them in questions. So the quote that I have here is, when f of x turns into its inverse, why does three comma eight or any point switch its x and y value? And so I will explain that in today's video. So the screen is gonna move into the tablet now and I'm gonna explain everything about what an inverse function is. Okay, so now let's go over the definition of an inverse function. So an inverse function or an anti-function is a function that reverses another function. So if the function f, right, applied to an input x gives a result of y, then applying its inverse function g to y, the result is x, and vice versa. So if f of x equals y, if and only if g of y equals x. And so here's an example. If I ask you what is the inverse function of f of x equals x plus 4, right? What you would do? Well, remember that f of x is y. And now we know that an inverse function is basically you're switching your y and x value. And so you swap your x and y. So now instead of your y being here, your x is going to be here. And instead of your x being here, your y value is going to be here. So now solve for y and then you're going to get your answer. So do minus 4 on both sides, right? Because we have to get y by itself. So then we're going to get x minus 4 equals y. Or the proper way to notate it is the inverse function equals x minus 4. And so a question that I have for you is, but how can we prove that this equation is true or correct? And so we will get into that further in this lesson. Okay, so now we're going to look at inverse functions on the table. So you remember how I asked you the question of how can we prove that this equation is true? Or how is that function the inverse of it? Well, the way how we prove it is by looking at the table. So our regular function right here, right, f of x, we know that our x domain and our y range says that for our inputs is 0, 1, and 2. And our range is 1, 3, 5. And so for our inverse, the way how it should look like on a table is the reverse because inverse function is basically you're switching your x and y value. So notice how for here now, our x is 1 and our y is 0 because here in our regular function, the 0, it, it was originally our x value, but now it turns to our y value for the, our inverse. Notice how for the regular function, our 1 is our y value, but now the y changes into a x value, which is our domain now for our inverse function. And so what if I asked you what is going to be the next coordinate for this inverse function? Well, we know that for the regular function is 1, 3. Our inverse is going to have to make the coordinate switch its place, the x and y value place. So our x value is now going to be 3, and our y value is going to be 1. Now, how about 2, 5? In our regular function, is 2, 5, but in our inverse, is going to be 5, 2. Why? Because in inverse functions, the x and y value always changes its place. They always swap. Okay, now let's look at this. So basically, it says write both the function and its inverse. So looking back at the table, right, we're given that 0, 1 is our first coordinate. Also, our y-intercept. So we know something already. Our y equals mx plus b form, right? b is 1. Now, what is m, your slope? Well, your slope is plus 2. Why? Because every single time we go to another coordinate, um, your y value gets added by 2 every single time. So now we could write our equation for this function. So f of x equals 2x plus 1. And so what is the inverse of that function? Well, remember that we have to switch our x and y value. So notice how this will also be rewritten as y equals 2x plus 1. So now we just switch our x and y value and solve from there. x equals 2y plus 1. Now to get y by itself, we do minus 1 on both sides to get x minus 1 equals 2y. And to get y by itself, we're going to have to do divide by 2 on both sides to get, my bad for the space, but x minus 1 over 2 equals the inverse function. 
And so, sorry for the space, but basically, right here is, let me use a different color. <laughs> right here is the answer. So, this right here, your inverse is x minus 1 over 2, and your actual function is 2x plus 1. And let's look at this. Look, if we look back into this um, table, we're saying that, let's use a different color. We're saying that, right, if the regular function is 2x plus 1, that is true. Look, if we input 0 as our x value right here, right, 2 times 0 is 0, 0 plus 1 is 1, which is true. 1 is our input now. So 2 times 1 is 2, 2 plus 1 is 3. So our output is 3, yes. 2, how about 2? If we do 2 times 2, 2 times 2 is 4, 4 plus 1 is 5. Our output is 5, yes. Now let's look at the inverse. The inverse, we're going to have to use this one right here. So if we say our x value is 1, then it has to be 0. Is that true? 1 minus 1 is 0. 0 divided by 2 is 0. Remember that 0 divided by any number will equal 0. How about 3? If x is 3, would it equal 1? Let's see. 3 minus 1 is 2. 2 divided by 2 is 1? Yes. So that's why this works. So as you see, not only can we like solve it algebraically, but if we put this in the table, then this will also work as well. Now, let's look at the inverse functions on a graph. So when graphing a function and this inverse, both functions reflect over the y equals x. And we can see here, let's say that the function, this is not true, by the way, but let's say that the function was 2x minus 1, right? So I'm talking about, let me highlight this for a second. So I'm talking about this line right here, right? Let's say this line was 2x minus 1, right? And this line right here, which I'm going to say purple, is 1 half x. And so notice how they're reflecting over the y equals x. This is true for all inverse functions and its functions itself. Okay, so now let's look at problems of inverse functions. So let's look at this one first. So what is the inverse function of h of x equals 5 minus 2x? Remember that, let's rewrite this first as y equals 5 minus 2x. That's the first step because h of x is the same thing as y. Now what we do is switch the y and x value. So that would be x equals 5 minus 2y. And so now we have to solve for y. So do minus 5 on both sides to get x minus 5 equals 2y. And divide 2 on both sides to get your final product of x minus 5 over 2 equals y. And so this is your inverse function for h of x. So you can either write y or you can say the inverse of h of x. So before I even ask you what is the inverse of 1, let's plug it into the table first to make it more easier for you guys. So for the regular function h of x, let's first put our y-intercept. So our y-intercept is 0, 0,5. Now let's put 1. 1 comma what is going to get our range? So 2 times 1 is 2. 5 minus 2 is 3. So 1 comma 3. And lastly, 2. If we plug in 2 as our x, 5 minus 4 is 1. And so now let's fill out our inverse table for this function. So if our domain was 0 for our regular function, what is the domain for our inverse, the first one? Well, it's going to be 5 comma 0 because we switched our x and y value. The same goes for here. Our next one is gonna be three comma one because our regular function had it as one comma three. So our inverse is gonna be swapped. So now lastly, it's gonna be one comma two because our x and y values switch. Okay, now we can answer this question. So the inverse of one, right? What is the inverse of one? Well, the inverse of one is two. When x is 1, y equals 2. Now, how about the inverse of 3? What is the inverse of 3? Well, when x is 3, y is 1. And lastly, what is the inverse of 5? Well, when x is 5, y is 0. And so that's how you answer this type of questions when they ask you, what is the inverse of this input? Now, my last question is, is the inverse of y equals x, the inverse equals y? Well, let's look at it. So... If we say that y equals x, right, if we swap it, right, we're going to say x equals y. Well, that is true. If y equals x, x equals y. And if you think about it, right, 
if you're saying that x equals 2, right? That means that y also has to be 2. And so we switch 2 comma 2. That is going to be the same thing as our original function. So y equals x and x equals y is the same thing. So that's why this statement is true. If is the inverse of y equals x, the inverse equals y. That is true because you're basically having the same number for your input and your outputs. Okay, so overview, like what just happened? So basically, right, this is my input, of course. Every single time I make a video like this, I'm going to put my input and my opinion about it and define it to you in my terms. So whenever you are asked to find the inverse function of a function, you just basically switch your y and x variable and solve for y in terms of x. That's basically the, the whole concept of an inverse function. And that's how simple as that. But the only thing that is complicated is when you actually have to solve for y. And that's the big problem. But the whole concept about the inverse function is just basically switching your domain and range. And so now let's look at some examples. So we have f of x equals radical x plus 10 or the square root of x plus 10. Either way works. So... We're asked to find the inverse of that. So the first thing that I would do, right, is say that y equals radical x plus 10. Now, switch your x and y value. So now that would be x equals radical y plus 10. Now, what do you do from here? Well, notice how we have a radical, right? To take out this radical, we're going to have to square both sides. And that's going to be x squared equals y plus 10. Remember that the square root, that, remember that when we square root something, if you square it, the radical is going to be taken away. So now we have x squared equals y plus 10. And so what did we do last? Well, to isolate y by itself, do minus 10 on both sides to get x squared minus 10 equals y, or the inverse. Okay, see, that wasn't that bad, right? Okay, now let's do this function right here, g of x. So if g of x equals cube root x minus 4, what is the inverse function? Well, the first thing I would do is say y equals the cube root x minus 4. Switch our x and y value to be x equals cube root y minus 4. Do plus 4 on both sides. I will get x plus 4 equals cube root y. And to take out the cube root, what we have to do is cube both sides to get x plus 4 cube equals y. Now you can leave it like this or you can simplify even more by doing FOIL, but let's just leave it like this for now. So x plus 4 cube equals y or the inverse of g, which is the answer. Okay, so now it's time to quiz yourself. So under the description below on this video, I have put a link on Google Form and it's to take you 10 to 20 minutes, right? to do this. It's called inverse functions and it's only like five to six questions on inverse functions and what we went over. Obviously, this is not all about inverse functions, but you kind of have an understanding now of what an inverse function is. And so you are allowed to take the quiz more than once and you're not alone. Once you submit your Google form, you will automatically get feedback from me. So what that means is that whether you get it right or wrong, I will. there will be an automated message on the bottom of each question telling you how to approach the question and how the right answer is correct and how the wrong answers are incorrect. And yeah, that's what the quiz is about. And yeah, good luck. And so before I go now, um, these are other Algebra 2 topics that if you guys want me to go over, like absolute value equations, inequalities, um, trigonometry, exponential functions, graph, graphing and quadratics, complex numbers, or any other topics that are not mentioned here. Please tell me. And one thing before I go is how many stick figures did you see on this video? That's one. If you guys want to comment that below, you can, you guys can. And the last thing before I go is to subscribe, like, and comment. But yeah, that's basically it for inverse functions. Well, not really, but this is just the basic concept.
And so if you guys want to see more videos like this or um, want me to explain some certain topics like like complex numbers or anything like that, or it doesn't even have to be about algebra, it could be about physics, chemistry, or geometry, then just tell me um then just tell me on the comments below. But yeah, until next time I'll see you guys and thanks for watching.